Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Another beautiful day here in Austin, Texas. Welcome to my video blog on green building and building science. I'm here with Chris Maxwell Gaines of Innovative Water Solutions. Chris, hey, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, Chris is uh, a well-known expert in uh, rainwater catchment, and his company did a great job on our rainwater catchment system on this house. Uh, this is a Barley and Pfeiffer uh, architected house. Uh, we're here in Westlake, which is a suburb of Austin. And um, I wanted to have Chris kind of give us a brief overview of the system. What are the, some of the kind of features and benefits of using that in our hot, humid Austin climate? Which, of course, we're coming off some really bad drought weather. Very bad. Um, so some people might think, why would we do rainwater catching when there is no rain? Um, but in fact, Austin, Texas, on an annualized basis, gets quite a bit of rain. I think our annual rainfall is probably in the 30s somewhere, isn't That's it, right, Chris? About 32 inches. Yeah, 32 inches. So I lived in Portland, Oregon, a couple years ago. We got in the uh, kind of mid to upper 30s. So in reality, in terms of a number of inches of annual rainfall, Austin's not all that different from the uh, very wet and rainy Northwest. Yeah, the only difference is the amount of rain that comes at one time. Uh, here in Central Texas, we're in a uh, place called Flash Flood Alley, so we have huge rain events followed by long periods of drought. So yeah. we have to uh, uh, design these systems in order to capture those large rain events. Yeah, good point. Um, so Chris, this house is about 3,700 square feet or so of uh, living space or HVAC space. Um, we've got some additional roof line with uh, an attached carport. We're probably over 4,000 square feet of roof space. What would a system like this, uh, what kind of catchment do we have here, and uh, how did you guys design that in terms of how much uh, rain we would catch on a typical rain event? So with a roof of this size, around 4,000 square feet, uh, you're going to capture uh, a little over 600 gallons per inch. So That's therefore, great. you have about 2,500 gallons per inch of rain off this roof. And because we're in Texas, because of our larger rain events, we try to size these systems to capture at least a two inch, hopefully a three inch event. Uh, since most of the events are two inches and lower, mm -hmm. but we do have those large three inch events and even larger that comes along. So we wanna make sure that we have enough storage volume because if we put in something that's too small, those large rain events, majority of that water is just wasted out right. the overflow of the tank. So we really have to ensure that we give the most efficient system for our customers. Very smart. Now in this case, this house is not using that water for potable water, or we're not using it inside the house in other words. This is strictly for, uh, for irrigation purposes. And, and for Texas, because of the long growing season, uh, using it, especially in urban areas for irrigation purposes, is probably the, the most optimal and best use for the water. Um, there's just a lot of logistics with trying to bring in the water uh, to use it for non-potable toilet flushing, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of logistics, a lot of uh, hoops to go through. So using that rainwater just for irrigation makes the system a lot simpler and easier for the homeowner to maintain. Yeah, good point. Let's walk up to the house, guys, and um, or Chris, I should say, and let's take a look at how this is piped. So Chris, this is a wet system, correct? That is correct. So basically, all of the downspouts are, if you look at them right now, you'll see they look shiny, they look like metal downspouts, but they're actually a PVC downspout. And this is because water basically has to go into the PVC. And since this is an above ground system, you can pan over and you can see the inlet of the tank. So that PVC on that downspout has to be higher than that inlet of that tank over there. So basically, we've created a P-trap. So imagine this, a oh, P-trap yeah. underneath, your, underneath your kitchen sink. Water goes in one side, comes out the other side. As long as one side is lower than the other side, then all the water is going to go into the uh, cistern. Mm -hmm. And uh, a wet system is much more efficient because you can actually collect from every single square foot of your house. Oh, smart. A dry system, which is basically a downspout that goes into the top of a tank, is very inefficient because you can only collect from maybe one or two downspouts that are closest to the cistern. So a wet system really opens up a huge opportunity to collect a ton of water throughout the whole year. That's pretty smart. Yeah, nearly every uh, bit of our roof, except for maybe a few awnings like this one above a uh, a window here or pipe to that system. Tell me about screening, Chris. What's uh, What should people be knowing about how we screen this house or what they need to do? So there's a couple of different uh, methods to do this. You can you know, have gutter protection. You can have screening on top of your gutter. Um, by doing it in your gutter, you're going, you're going to uh, conceal the screening. And 
gutter filtration or filtration at the downspouts is very important because it's always the large debris is what causes problems. Right. Twigs, leaves, twigs. big leaves, mm -hmm. acorns, those type of debris getting down into the wet system and then up into the tank, that's what ultimately decays and cakes up at the bottom of the uh, cistern. Smart. So by keeping that out, by using a gutter screen or some other method, other uh, components that are available on the market to screen out at the downspout, you're going to really uh, prolong the life of the system and really keep down the maintenance on that. Smart. Let's cut the video for a second and we'll walk back to the Okay, tank. so we're in the back of the lot now. And uh, Chris, why don't you tell us about the two tanks that we've got back here? Certainly. So right here we have two 3,000 gallon fiberglass tanks. And basically, uh, fiberglass was specced out for the project, but uh, we could have used other types of tanks, such as a, a polyethylene tank or a galvanized metal tank. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically, if you see here, when we earlier we talked about the wet system, so these pipes come underground and then come up to here, and then this is the inlet pipe that rises up. So water is going to rise up in this inlet pipe, and then when it gets high enough, it's going to move over this, in, uh, this 90 degree bend to our first flush system. So we have a, a small first flush system. This is basically flushing that first bit of water that comes off the roof. Uh, this will help keep the smaller debris, uh, the particulates, out of the cistern. Um, and then this system has a dripping mechanism down here. So basically, after the rain event, this first flush system will drip, uh, drip itself out so that the homeowner doesn't have to worry about draining it. After the first flush fills, then the water will now go into the tank and then basically uh, we have a line that's feeding both of these tanks but traditionally we can do it by feeding one tank and then the bottom of the two tanks are tied together so basically the tanks are in series and when that water comes into the first tank it's going to fill both of the tanks evenly because they're tied in series and then from that pipe that connects the two tanks that leads over to the mechanical to the pump system which is located in a mechanical room and we'll I guess go and take a look at that right yeah, now. Yeah, if you can scan over here, you can see the uh, the electric meter right there, and there's some of our downspouts. Right on the other side of the, that electric meter there is our mechanical room. So let's uh, cut the video for a second, and Chris and I will go over and give you a quick tour of how we're actually taking this rainwater to our irrigation system. All right, we're in the carport area just outside the house. The door to the uh, from the carport to the house is right behind us. We've got three storage closets out here in this carport. And one of these is really our mechanical closet, so come on in here and we'll let Chris show you how the pumping system integrates uh, with the rainwater collection. All right, so basically, after the two tanks come together and we plumb them together, we have a common suction line, which is this line right here. It first goes through an inlet filter, and this just helps to prevent uh, large debris from making it to the pump. And this has a stainless steel filter element that the homeowners can easily clean out. This goes into the pump system. Basically then, we have a 20-gallon bladder with a cycle stop valve. And the cycle stop valve is basically meant to ensure that every irrigation zone has the same pressure regardless of the demand. And so basically it regulates the, uh, water, uh, the uh, water flow and the pressure. And so it's a very neat tool, especially when you're going into a irrigation system that has uh, many different types of zones, drip, spray, um, varying from 5 gallons per minute to you know, 30 gallons per minute, a cycle stop valve really helps out with that. So basically after that, it goes on back out, um, it goes through this uh, check valve right here. This is to prevent any type of uh, backflow. Uh, from the city system into the uh, rainwater system. Now it's kind of hard to tell Chris, but here's our outflow to the irrigation system so that basically our irrigation system can either take house water and this backflow preventer is not allowing any of that rainwater to come back to the house and then this uh, is then bringing the pump water to the irrigation system. So that right here on the outside of this wall is where the irrigator is picking up that water and then he's got a control system on there that allows him to only pump water from the irrigation tanks when there's water to be pumped, okay. and if not, we're getting it from the uh, from the city. From the city, yep. Yeah. And you always have to have backup. You always have to have some sort of municipal backup supply for an irrigation uh, uh, rainwater system because there's always going to be times when you run out of water. Even the most well-planned system, there's always going to be droughts. There's going to be long periods without rain, 
and those are the times in Texas when we need water for irrigation. So planning a backup system is vital for these rainwater systems. Yeah. Chris, great job. Your crew did Thank a really you. nice job on this project. Thank you very much. I think man. our clients are really going to like this system. Thanks for joining me. Have okay. a good day, everybody.